Hi there folks, this is WP Tonic, episode 1010. We've got a fantastic guest for this show, folks. We've got Bob WP joining us. <laughs> how are you doing, Bob, today? you like to introduce yourself a bit more, Bob? <laughs> I'm doing really good, and thanks for having me. Yeah, i just uh, been in the biz for a long time. Uh, I've done a lot of training over the years. That was kind of my focus for the last five years, so I thought of one-on-one -on -one training with WordPress and coaching and a lot of uh, workshops out there. But lately I've really been focusing more on the blog, although it's always been around. So my primary, yeah, my primary focus right now is on Bob WP, the blog, and our, our kind of new podcast, Do the Woo, and just pushing out tons of content. And that's what I love doing, so trying to make that happen. You surely are that, Bob, you're a contact machine. <laughs> I'm going to let my beloved co I'm, I'm waiting I'm in, in excitement how my co-host is going to choose to introduce himself. Go on, John. Introduce yourself. Hello. Uh, my name is John Locke, and I run a small WordPress consultancy in Sacramento, California called Lockdown Design. Um, John had the much more interesting questions, folks, so I'm going to let him ask the first question to Bob. Off you go, John. <laughs> okay, sure thing. So, uh, Bob, you know, people in the WordPress community, they know you had a really successful podcast before, and now you launched uh, this new podcast, Do the Woo. What prompted you to kind of shift away from uh, covering more general aspects of WordPress to focusing down on WooCommerce. Yeah, it was it was interesting because the other podcast was fun, but there was a point where I just, I, I'll be honest with you, I became bored with it. It was like, I felt like I was kind of regurgitating everything I talked about on my blog, and it, it just wasn't doing anything, and I, I'm not one to just say, okay, it's got to get better, it's got to get better, and I thought, is this kind of reflective of... My show, you know, I'm not really quite as enthusiastic about it. So I just I thought, okay, this is it. I've got to really rethink this. I want a podcast. I'm going to pull the plug, and I did that um, mid last year, I think. I just told everybody, I don't know, it's going to happen. I have no idea where I'm going, and I just let it simmer over, yeah, probably what from mid last year till March this year. Few things popped in my head, and every time, and I was getting more and more into WooCommerce and doing stuff with that. It wasn't like you know a priority, and I was looking around, thinking, well, you know, there's no Woo podcasts out there. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe there's a reason there's no Woo podcasts. So I talked to a couple of people at Woo and said, what do you think about it? And they gave me some feedback and gave me some really good direction and ideas. And I said, hey. You know, I'm just going to go for it. Let's see how this goes, because I like to, you know, give it a try. And so far, it's been going really well, and I'm I'm enjoying it. It's 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 interesting because I'm not I don't consider myself an e-commerce expert because I haven't been like deep into it for years. But I just love bringing on these people that are the experts, and it's really interesting mix of experts, shop owners, learning all sorts of stuff. Fun fun good times. Awesome. Jonathan, do you have a question? Well, I was just thinking as um, Bob was saying, enthusiasm, and it's not a word normally linked to me, is it, John? No, but I suppose I'm English, aren't I, Bob? So if I'm not, enthusiasm is not expected from me, is it, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> English sarcasm is though. Yeah. Um, so um, let's go forth, Bob. So um, I thought one of the you know what some of the interesting elements of your reply is um, shop owners so where do you think people go wrong when they're you know you've been interviewing a lot of people in this area where do you think some of the basic mistakes on the you know the owner side that they make on their WooCommerce e-commerce um, road to domination. What yeah. are some of the mistakes that you must be reflected on this a little bit? Yeah, I think it's really, um, I think it's in the planning stages. It's kind of 
across the board with websites, I think, anything, business, you know, whatever. I think people jump into it thinking it's going to be easy, it's going to be, you know, I can just throw stuff online, I can start selling stuff. I've always created these funny little um, clay characters, and everybody's going to love them because everybody seems to like them that I talk about them. So once I get them online, everybody's going to buy them. They don't really take it, I want to say seriously, but they don't take enough time to really think through what they're doing. And they just, it, it, we have this kind of in the internet, go out and make money. It's fairly easy to do. I mean, they hear that a lot. So they, yeah, I can do that. And with the online courses, with everything else that's coming out in that kind of e-commerce area, membership sites, same thing. Everybody's doing it. Everybody says you can make tons of money. It's not much work. Da, da, da. And I think that's where the biggest challenges because they get into it and they think, oh my God, you know, I didn't realize it was going to be this. It's yeah, just the normal host crap that you hear online. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> it hasn't changed and it's going to continue. <laughs> From the normal endless list of parasites that want to get money out of you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, um, it's, it's something, I mean, there's, you know, other things here and there, but that really is a big one. Now there's loads of people that tell you exactly what you want to hear, even though it's completely wrong, isn't it? Right, right, yeah. Uh, why am I just being English synthesis? Is it my age, Bob? Can you tell me? Yeah, I think so. I, me too. I, I get to be a cranky old fart, you know. No, I'm yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, so obviously planning is important, and like yeah. you say, it's something I'm as you could accuse me of that as much as anybody. <laughs> Um, exactly. Because it's not, you know, um, most battles are lost before you, they're even fought, are that, aren't they, Bob? Yeah. So, yeah. So we move on. So what are some of the, you know, list on the client side again before we delve on the developer side? What are some of the things you you've learned that you would advise that you got to get in place after you've done some planning to, for world domination for your shopping e-commerce solution, Bob? Yeah, I think it's. You know, WooCommerce is great. I think that platform, you've got to really think through because there's so many different platforms, so many different, you know, there's hosted platforms for e-commerce, there's plugins, there's whatever. So you really need to look at all of those. And I think that for them, a lot of times they don't look at the, you know, you can't know everything that's going to happen a year, two, three years down the road. But you need to plan a little bit and you need to plan for that growth and you want to be able to bring in something whether it's you know whatever plugin you're using or whatever platform you're using bring in that idea that okay you know in 3 months I'm hoping to do this in 6 months maybe I'll be doing this maybe I'll be adding this all these different elements to you know your whatever they are whatever you're selling i think that a lot of people don't think long term. So they get to a point and they think, well, now I have to do this. Do I have to change everything? Is what I have in place going to work? Is it, you know, reinventing the wheel? Then, and again, that's something I've seen a lot when people come to me because they're always at this point in time during the process and they're coming to me and say, oh, I didn't realize I should have been thinking. And it's like, okay, you know. So, so it's it, it's real interesting because I'm not, you know, I mean, on the developer side, I'm not a developer, and I but I know enough to be dangerous, and I know enough to say at a certain point, a lot of them don't, you know, they think they can do everything by themselves, too. Yeah, no, no, and that's the thing. Yeah, and a simple store, yeah, okay, get it started, you know, whatever. But that whole, there, I mean, there's a whole marketing, all that stuff over on one side, but then there's a whole thing of you, you're building something that, could be your livelihood. And this is an important piece. You don't just go and say, oh, there's that trashy, empty building. I'm going to move my store into it. And I don't really care, you know, that there's no windows or, you know, the plumbing doesn't work or anything, you know. So it's the same thing of your site. you got to really – I don't recommend a lot of people building e-commerce sites by themselves. Get some kind of involvement with the developer. Get some involvement with the designer. All these different people because – there's just too many aspects that are important to muck up along the way. 
Yeah, well, the, um, John's got a lot of experience. Um, I've got a fair oh, bit. Oh, I bet. Um, I see him nodding there. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling I think his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think one of the factors, um, Bob, is a lot of people start their e-commerce shop um, as a secondary business, which is great, you know, because they need the income and there's there's going to be a, probably a longer period. And then the dreaded problem of shipping. Shipping... Um, starts to become uh, an increasing bit of a nightmare for those involved in e-commerce. Um, and then um, the white unicorn of drop shipping is mentioned, and the, the, a lot of people say that will solve all their problems. Can you give some insight uh, around, because sh shipping is a, does seem a bit of a, of a, bump, a real problem. And what's your thoughts about drop shippers and all around that? You know, I really, when I, because I, I don't get into that a lot of, lot of that part of it, and even when I coach people, I, I taught a lot of basic e-commerce workshops on WooCommerce, and I would go through all the different elements, and whenever I came to shipping, whenever I came to taxes, I would tell people, you know, 99% of you at this point in time don't deal with yourself. Get a professional to help you, you know, somehow if it's, or, I mean, if you're shipping one or two things, yeah, no big deal. But if you're shipping a lot of stuff, there's there's a lot of vendors out there that can help you. There's, you know, like you said, there's different ways that your life will become a lot simpler without having to deal that with that. And the same with the taxes. You know, the taxes are a nightmare. And I I tell everyone, I'm not going to tell you how to set up taxes in WooCommerce. I don't even want to know how to set up taxes. I would rather get somebody that knows what the heck they're doing for I don't get put in jail or something, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, the internal Revenue, they're not known for their warmth and kindness, are they, Bob? So yeah. you don't really don't want to miss it. Go on, John. Ask another question, John. Yeah, Ask definitely. Another. So I, I'm glad you mentioned that, like, taxes and shipping are really complicated aspects of the whole e-commerce site. And again, you're talking about people that start this as a secondary job or as a secondary source of income and they're thinking, okay, I can grow this into something. Do you find when you're consulting with people about e-commerce sites that they're often surprised by how complex these aspects are in addition to, you know, other things like product photography, what, what things really take people by surprise? Yeah, it is a, it is a shipping and the taxes. And the shipping is a big one because I, I don't know how many people have told me, you know, well, we have, you know, 40 products and they all have to go in this box and they have to have certain pack and they start going down this. And it's like I was talking to Patrick Rowland in one of my first episodes and he said, you know, these people really need to, in the beginning, go and talk to the people at the post office. Talk to, you know, talk to these and find out what is involved here because they don't. They don't. They think it, it seems like it's, and I, to me, it seems obvious. But there's a lot of people that just, it does. It surprises them. They say, wow, you know, I didn't realize shipping was going to be like this. Or they get in and look at the taxes and what I, you know, I sell to every city in the United States, and I've got the VAT, and I, you know, I've got all these other things, and how, this little box here, how do I even start? So yeah, there's there's huge surprises, and those are the, I think those are the two biggest. I, I think some, you know, there's a bit of just overall what it takes to set it up. I mean, you know, that's kind of a I won't say a no-brainer, but they get in, think it might be a lot simpler, or they have very simple needs, and they get into something that's way more complicated than they need. They maybe could have used a different plugin that would have downloaded two items. Instead, they could go with this big route, and they think, oh, i got to put all this in, and they just, you know, they bury themselves in a hole. So there's, but the shipping and taxes are big, big surprises for a lot of people. I have to collect taxes, they say. It's <laughs> <laughs> shocking. <laughs> Awful, isn't it? They're going to have to give something yeah, to yeah. the Internal Revenue Service. Whatever. <laughs> I think the other thing, um, when I've done it, is you, um, and I, I don't know if John's the same, I'll get to this pretty quick now. Um, 
Well, doesn't it automatically sync with QuickBooks? Doesn't it sync automatically with my accountancy system? Well, actually, no, it doesn't. Um, and this could be a slight problem. I, you know, I think that's a that's a thing. If you're a developer or somebody a consultant, you the reality of trying to get something consistently to communicate with QuickBooks isn't going to be as easy as they thought. Would you agree, yeah. Bob? Oh yeah, yeah, and, and and CRMs is another thing. I've heard more people say I can't hook this into my CRM. You know, it's mm -hmm. like well, I thought it would be just so simple to do, and yeah, that integration is not always as they had it expected for sure. Go on, go on, John. Let's fire away. Sure, sure thing. <laughs> so what you know when it comes to the actual uh, layout of an e-commerce site, what characteristics do you see in sites that are successful that, that are different from sites that could be successful but are not? Yeah, I think it really boils down to one is, you know, making sure your navigation is good. I mean, just making sure people can find things easily, have a, have, I, I, some people just put too much stuff. You know, too many navigation. I mean, people don't know where to even start. And I think another thing is, and I've talked to a few people about this even on my podcast, the, the, everybody feels like they need to put all their products on the home page. So it's like when they land on the home page, here is everything we sell, and there's all this, you know, depths of whatever, and you're going, again, down a rabbit hole where you need to really kind of not overwhelm your customer because they're gonna they're gonna search you know hopefully they will search they'll be able to navigate their way in and I think that with small shops and we've been talking a lot about this too is bringing up the whole thing of you know this is kind of our story putting a little bit, bit of more personality into it than just saying here are my 150 products look at them type of thing so it's, it's really it's it's overwhelming the user when they get there and trying to avoid I was just talking to somebody today in an interview avoid that and being really careful with pop-ups and all this other stuff that everybody's so excited about I went on a site just recently somebody said will you please go look at this e-commerce site and tell me what you think and I didn't even ask him what he sold or anything and I got on his site and before I could even take in my first breath a pop-up came up and asked me to join his newsletter, and I didn't even know what his site was about. I mean, I'm looking, like, trying to peek behind the pop-up, and I'm thinking, whoa, you know. So I, I think it's just, yeah, it's just making that user experience as easy as possible. And I'm, I wish there was a magic bullet, but I think that people really need to test it and, uh, yeah, and, and don't overwhelm the user. That's great, Bob. I think we're going to go for our break, folks. When we come back, we're going to learn more about e-commerce from Bob WP and about some of the things that influence him in his journey. Back in a minute, folks. Oh, we're coming back. We're talking all things e-commerce with um, Bob WP. It's been a great discussion. So, John, um, Ask Bob about some of the things that have influenced him and uh, some of the questions you've got ready around that area, John. Sure thing. Um, and I, I, I know uh, we talked uh, earlier, or, and you said that there are a couple things that, uh, you know, just make people successful. Uh, you know, being flexible and open-minded, um, not focusing on failure and uh, being empathet uh, empathic. Uh, do you want to expound on some of those thoughts? Yeah, it just, I mean, my, I, I guess I kind of always base on what I've done. And I've always, I've been in business, I don't wallow in defeat. So if something doesn't seem to be working, I accept it that it's work, not working and I don't beat it to death and say, you know, you have to work because I thought of you. <laughs> so I'm 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 real I'm quick to flip the switch, but not so quick that I it's just a give up type thing. But I know that time. So I always tell people, you know, don't 
don't bury yourselves in agony if something isn't working. Find find another direction. Be flexible. And I've also found that working in my position where I'm talking about empathy is, and I think everybody needs it in every aspect of their life, but I think that, you know, whether you're a designer, you're a developer, you're a trainer, whatever, you got to really understand and give people the benefit of the doubt that they haven't been there as long as you've been and that when they ask you a question and you want to, and I, hey, I'm guilty of this as well. I want to roll my eyes and think, oh, my God, if I hear somebody ask me that one more time, you know, isn't it obvious? Well, no, it's not obvious because it's something very new to them. They're new to technology. Maybe they're not even comfortable with technology. I think all of us in that field need to understand that, yeah, this stuff isn't um, as easy as we make it out to be. And we got to be careful using that word easy because people take that as, yeah, everything's easy these days. And it's there's a lot more challenges. I mean, WordPress, you know, we all know there was one point that wasn't very easy. And sometimes I still sometimes cuss and swear at it. <laughs> but, <don't>. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not Cora. Uh, um, but, no, I, I think that's well put, Bob, because actually um, – of the, of the content management system, it's probably what's still one of the more easier ones. <laughs> oh, yeah. But on, but on the other hand, um, I deal in the... I've got two companies, one in the WordPress maintenance support area, the other one supports real estate agents and brokers, mm. and um, both are built on WordPress technology, or well, the, um, the um, agent product is. And... Um, uh, it's like I live in two totally different worlds, Bob. Um, the normal user still finds it frustrating, difficult to use. And I think in the WordPress community, it's quite easy to start living in a kind of tech bubble, isn't it, Bob? Right, exactly. Yep, yep. We kind of get in that little bubble there that we just got to sometimes burst out of, for sure. So... Um, Obviously, you talk to a lot of people in the WooCommerce. You know, obviously, Automatic bought the company. Um, I think it's over a year now, isn't it? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think it's been. Yeah, it's been. I think over a year. Yeah. Doesn't time fly? And, oh, okay, um, no kidding. <laughs> um, what do you see? What you know? Obviously, um, you are. Bob WP, so I'd imagine you've got a crystal ball somewhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. what, do you, what, what do you see happening in the next year around WooCommerce and e-commerce and WordPress? Any kind of any foresights yeah. you see? Yeah, there? you know, I, boy, I just, you know, with WooCommerce, I know I've talked to some of the people there, and I think that I see their direction trying to make not so much WooCommerce, you know, do a million other things. They're, I think they are tr making some effort to make it more user-friendly, uh, making a, a little bit more friendly UI piece by piece. It, it can't be done overnight. And I, I, my, my thoughts are, I, I keep thinking, okay, there's got to, there's going to be some kind of hosted e-commerce solution come. I mean, I think a lot of us are already thinking that. And and that, honestly, I think that would probably be good because there, are, you know, everybody has different options, everybody has different needs, and that will work for a lot of people. And of course, it wouldn't work for other people. But I, you know, sometimes I look at, I, I try not to get to. I, I'm very accepting of what happens in WordPress. You know, I kind of stay out of the WP drama. I, <laughs> I, I tend to, you know, when people something happens. There's a new change, and everybody goes off. I kind of say, "Oh, all right, cool. All right, okay, I see what that is. I'm I'm moving on." So, so I'm kind of a laid back, and I don't really. I, I don't know what's going to happen with it. It's, you mean, it, you, just, mean oh. you, you mean you don't contri contribute to one of those Twitter dramas? <laughs> oh, God, sometimes I just want to go, ah! I, I actually block them after a while. <laughs> oh, dear, I just don't. I don't know, you live with yourself, Bob. I just really don't. <laughs> God, you don't contribute to the drama. I just don't know. So, Bob... Um, 
we had a bit of a discussion a few weeks about e-commerce, and it was, um, you know, WooCommerce hosted, you know, self-hosted solution compared to Shopify. Now, when you, do, I don't know if you've dealt with Shopify or some of the other fully hosted solution like big e-commerce. Have you got any reflecting back? Have you got any kind of how you would explain to somebody when maybe Shopify is the right solution or when? Uh, a fully um, self-hosted solution like WooCommerce is the way to go. Got any thoughts about that, Bob? You know, it's interesting because I haven't, I haven't dove into the e-commerce side of the platforms. I mean, I've never. I'll be honest. I've never even touched Shopify. You huh? know, I, I know. Yeah, I know people that have used it and stuff. And I, I did build a stock photography site like a billion years ago, I had this big idea I was going to become a stock photo um, mega millionaire or something, and um, I did it on shopping cart. And and this was like, this was some time ago, and it was it was an interesting experience, and the site was just horrifying. But um, did it I think... you, did it <laughs> you, Bob? Yeah, it was, it was, oh, it was, I, I went to the Wayback Machine and found it. And I thought, oh man, I'm I'm never going to tell anybody the URL of that sucker, but <laughs> but no, you know, actually, I I'm kind of in a place where when people come to me, if they want to know about WooCommerce, I tell them, hey, this is what you can expect. Da 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 da. If they come back to me three days later and say, you know, I've really talked to a lot of people, I'm going to go with Shopify. My big answer is, bless you. I hope it works for you. Go for it. Yeah, it's, it's you know, because everybody, I'm hoping everybody does enough research themselves and figures it out, talks to the people that know what the heck they're talking about. They're not trying to influence them one or another. I've I've actually done WooCommerce workshops where I've suggested other plugins to people because I thought that plugin will work easier for you than WooCommerce. There's no reason to. So I'm very very open that way. I, I, I think people got to go the direction they feel they need to go. Hopefully, again, they've done the right kind of research and not talk to biased people and they, you know, talk to people that actually can really weigh the options and stuff. So it's, so I'm a little bit different that way where people didn't come to me and say, I'm trying to figure out which platform. I'm saying, if you want to know about WooCommerce, hey, I'll talk to you. But you may want to go out and talk to some other people figure out what's going to work for you. Sounds great to me, Bob. Go on, John, your next insightful sure. question. Yeah, well, that leads in perfectly. So, and in your podcast and in your travels through the WordPress community, you've talked to tons of experts. And, you know, you yourself, you know, teach people at the uh, Seattle meetup. But say you're a business owner and you're wanting to launch... A online store, what qualities are you looking for? What criteria are you looking for in a developer or an agency that you're looking to hire to build a WooCommerce store? You know, that's a good question because I'm very, uh, I really, as far as developers, I've met, you know, a lot of developers. I used to get a lot of them coming up to me and, oh, Bob, would you please, you know, refer people to me well, I don't quite know who you are and stuff. For me, I recommend people I've worked with myself. So I don't really have like a set of criteria. When somebody comes to me, I'll say, okay, I have maybe X, you know, five people here that I think would possibly be a good fit for you as far as a developer. And I'm happy to share those people with you because they've either worked with a lot of people I've known, you know, there's there's some trust there's some knowing, and that's huge to me. And, of course, if they know what the heck they're doing. But at the same time, I I have dealt with a lot of cheap people over my years. And so a lot of people that come to me are beginners. They're just starting, and they don't want to spend anything. And it, it becomes really tough for me because... I know some really good developers, and sometimes I'll just say, okay, what do you need? And they say, well, I want to start a store, and I want to do one download. 
So I talk a little bit and maybe figure out a theme and, you know, it's easy. If they list 25 things on the list of everything they need because they're starting a membership site, I may say to them, just roughly right now, I, I figure you're probably looking at a starting price of, well, let's say $10,000. And then I hear this, you know, the crickets. Uh, the crickets. <laughs> it's like, are you still there? Uh, hello. But you know, I, I I try to be really upfront with them, and and I I don't I don't. Bob, me, how, I Bob, have... Bob, how can you live <laughs> with yourself? You know, I'm, I'm I'm sure you've induced some heart attacks here. You know, uh, do you have a respirator at hand when yeah, you're looking at the, the reality, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> and I really I, I I screen a lot of people before I send them on to anybody I know because I don't want to I, I don't I, I don't really want to say it this way but I don't want to make give somebody a headache so if the person's really serious and they're willing they understand there is value and yes to get what they need they're gonna have to spend some money then yeah if not well I start looking at some other options for them and I don't know if I've even really answered your question, but it, it's really it's it's different for me when it comes to recommending a developer because I've never you know actually hired one myself. I've always kind of muddled through all my sites, but I am it's very. All, it's all coming out now, Bob. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? yeah I know you know, it is. The it's... truth is coming out, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's very insightful. We have ways and means of getting the truth out of yeah. our interviewers, folks. <laughs> Don't hear, but, actually, we normally get them plastered before they yeah. start talking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's a very um, it's I think people just need to. I, I always tell people talk to a lot of people you really know and trust, and find that developer. There's there's a lot of good developers out there, and there's a lot of screwy ones. Just like there's a lot of screwy trainers, a lot of good trainers, whatever. And I, you know, I. I, I think that a lot of people need to, and, and there are there are a lot of people that do finally get it that yes, I do need to make an investment here. I well, it's a, it's a very difficult situation, Bob, because I know some really fantastic, technically fantastic PHP WordPress developers, but they, they, you don't exactly get a warm, fuzzy feeling from them, and they're not the most best people to communicate with a client, are they? No, know, are yeah, they? you know, and I, I understand, I feel their pain, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, you give them a gob of money and you never hear anything for a month, you know, and oh, yeah. you wonder, wonder why the client's getting a little bit upset, you know, yeah, but, yeah. You know, but you know, it takes all sorts, doesn't it, but uh, I know, like John, I'm a bit more of a front end, and I know how to make a theme, but I've got two excellent developers or maintainers that work for me, Bill. So um, anything I can't cope, I've got a full team to support me. It's so oh, yeah. nice when you've got little yeah. workers that you can just pass the stuff over to. Yeah, and, and I, I, I'm the same way. If I get to a certain point with my site, I'm not going to go and start Googling and saying, okay, you know, tell me the code to drop in there. I'll contact somebody I know. Help me, you know. This is just is driving me nuts. I just need you to fix it. Do it, please. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's been an insightful. Bill's made some confessions on the show. The truth <laughs> has come out. So, um, <laughs> Bob, so Bob, um, how how can people get hold of you for more wisdom and insight? Yeah, yeah. I'm. Um, you know, they can go to bobwp.com. I mean, that's where. I live in, you know, if I could actually probably live in my site, I would do it somehow. I'm not quite sure how that would work. But, um, yeah, just, I always tell people, just Google Bob WP and you'll find me somewhere uh, that somewhere. you can actually feel comfortable talking to me. Somewhere <laughs> over the rainbow. Maybe. Yeah, they probably um, won't find my phone number anywhere, but they'll find every other way to communicate with me. <laughs> true. All right, John, how can people get hold of you, John? You can find me at my site, which is LockdownDesign.com. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Lockdown underscore. How do the fine people get a hold of you, Jonathan? Well, I'm easy to track down. You know, just go um, go look on Twitter, at Jonathan Denwood. People are amazed when people Twitter out. I instantaneously reply, don't I, John? Uh, yeah. um, 
And um, I do answer my email, actually. I'm not one of these that, you know, six weeks later I might reply. Um, so if you email me at Jonathan, J-O-N-T-H-A-N, at WP hyphen tonic.com you get a reply and I've just got a request folks for goodness sake go over to iTunes and goodness sake give us a bloody review will you no we're me and John we, you know, we do turn out a ton of freaking stuff for you lot to listen to and hopefully some of it's got some interest enough of you are listening to it give us a review will you Bob's been Bob thank you so much for coming on the show you even laugh at my English humour <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love English humor. And thank you for yeah. having me. <laughs> yes, well, sometimes I get a kind of bunny look from the guests. Sometimes I have to kind of ease off. John gives me that look because it's just not <laughs> registering. But you seem to have enjoyed it quite a lot, oh, I actually. Love didn't it. You? I, love right. it. I love it. Well, I'll yeah. see you next, next time. Um, oh, yes, and I forgot. Join us on Saturdays for WP Tonic, the, the round table. It starts at 10 a.m to 12 noon Pacific Standard Time on Blab. Listen live to it and uh, we turn the first hour into a podcast for your pleasure. So if you're around, join us this Saturday. See you soon, folks. Bye. Everybody say goodbye.